Hello, and welcome to the Ottawa Hospital Cancer Center's informational video for patients beginning chemotherapy. By attending this session, you consent to communicate with the chemotherapy team members and or volunteers using virtual tools like Zoom. Just like other online activities, virtual care has some privacy and security risks. We use technology that has been approved for clinical use at the Ottawa Hospital. We cannot guarantee a totally secure system. There are things you can do to help with privacy and confidentiality. For example, do not participate from a public location. Do not share your session link or password. Do not use someone else's computer or device. This includes a work computer device that is not yours. Do not use public Wi-Fi. Do not record this session. Personal treatment questions should be discussed privately at your upcoming chemotherapy appointment. Today's information cannot replace the advice of your physician or the need for an in-person visit prior to your chemotherapy. Virtual methods of communication, such as email, should not be used for urgent care. In those cases, contact the chemotherapy nurse, the oncologist, or else proceed to your nearest emergency department. If there are technical issues, please let the host of this session know. The information sheet we sent you has more information. This video will provide you and your loved ones with information to help you better understand your cancer and chemotherapy treatment. The goal of this video is to answer the following questions. What is cancer? How is it treated? How does chemotherapy work and how is it given? What are the common side effects of chemotherapy and what can be done to prevent or manage them? What resources are available to help you? The word cancer sounds as though it describes just one disease. However, it is a general term used to describe more than 120 different diseases. Each type of cancer has slightly different features. This is why we need to use different chemotherapy medications to treat different cancers. Regardless of the type of cancer you may have, all cancers have one thing in common. This is that they are made up of cells that are multiplying or dividing faster than normal healthy cells. There are two types of cancer, solid tumor and blood cancers. In general, cancers are named according to the part of the body where they first start to grow. For example, a cancer that starts from the breast tissue is called a breast cancer. There are some exceptions to this. For example, Cancers that form in the blood and lymph nodes have names like leukemia and lymphoma. If a solid tumor cancer starts growing in one area of the body, but then spreads to another area, such as the bone, it has metastasized. For example, breast cancer that has spread to bone. For specific information about the type of cancer you have, please feel free to visit the Canadian Cancer Society website at www.cancer.ca. There are many treatments for cancer, such as surgery, radiation therapy, and systemic therapy, or medication treatment. You may have one or a combination of these different therapies. You and your oncologist will decide on the best options for your treatment together. Some people may be given medications to treat their cancer that are not chemotherapy, such as hormone therapy, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. These medications work in different ways than chemotherapy and may have unique side effects that are managed differently. This presentation focuses on chemotherapy. Chemotherapy can be given before or after surgery or both. It may also be given in combination with radiation therapy or on its own. Your oncologist will discuss the different treatment options specific to your cancer with you. Once given, chemotherapy moves through the bloodstream and reaches all parts of your body. This is why side effects may happen. If you remember, we mentioned that cancer cells are quickly dividing cells. 
This is a characteristic that we can use to our advantage as chemotherapy acts on cells that are quickly dividing. Unfortunately, some normal healthy cells in the body may be affected as well. Your oncologist will prescribe the chemotherapy that is best suited to you and your cancer. You may be given one or a combination of different chemotherapy medications. Depending on the type of chemotherapy, it may be through a vein, also called intravenously or IV, or as an injection, also called subcutaneously. It can also be a pill to take by mouth, also known as oral chemotherapy. How long your treatment visit is will depend on the type and number of medications you are given. Ask your oncologist, pharmacist, or nurse for more information about the treatment time of the chemotherapy you have been prescribed. You will notice that the nurse who gives you your chemotherapy will be wearing a gown and gloves. This is because the nurse can potentially be exposed to many chemotherapy treatments each day they are at work. Let us now discuss some of the potential side effects associated with chemotherapy. Many great advances have been made in the prevention and management of symptoms that can come along with cancer treatment. Your healthcare team wants to know about any symptoms you are experiencing, as we have many resources to help you manage them. Please do not hesitate to ask us for help. Each time you come for treatment, you will be asked to report your symptoms at one of our computer stations through Your Symptoms Matter. This information will tell your healthcare team what is troubling you and starts the conversation about how we can help you. Your Symptoms Matter is a tool used to help your healthcare providers keep track of and manage any symptoms that you are having. This tool is meant to help you better communicate the effect of cancer and your treatments on your overall health and quality of life. It gives a clear outline of how strong your symptoms are over time, allowing your care team to better understand how you are feeling. You can now fill out your symptoms matter online with a computer, tablet, or mobile device. Visit www.isaac.com cancercare.on.ca to fill out the form 24 hours before your appointments. Fatigue or tiredness is the most common side effect of chemotherapy. It is important to listen to your body and rest as needed. Aim to get 30 minutes of moderate exercise on most days. Short naps may be taken but should be no more than one hour long. Balance, rest, and physical activity. People who stay active during their treatment experience less fatigue. To improve your sleep, try to wake up at the same time every day and limit alcohol and caffeine intake. Try to manage your stress and emotions. Let friends and family help and do not push yourself beyond your limits. Set daily goals and finish these tasks when you have the most energy. Eat healthy foods with lots of variety to have more energy. Learn more on how to manage fatigue. One of the most important side effects of chemotherapy is called bone marrow suppression. Bone marrow is the spongy material inside of your bones. Its job is to make white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. Chemotherapy can interfere with the bone marrow's ability to make these important cells. Your white blood cells protect your body from infection. They are able to attack viruses, allergens, and bacteria. The most common type of white blood cell is the neutrophil, which fights bacteria that can cause infections. When your white blood cell count falls below normal after treatment, you are at higher risk for infection. A drop in your neutrophil count does not happen right away. It usually occurs within 7 to 10 days after chemotherapy treatment and goes back to normal in about a week depending on the type of chemotherapy you receive. In addition to fever, other signs of infection can include any areas of redness and tenderness, a rash, a sore mouth or throat, a cough that creates mucus, 
a frequent need to pee that may come with burning or itching in the genital area. If you have any symptoms of infection, please contact the support line for patients immediately for help. After hours and on statutory holidays, please go to the emergency department. The most important sign of infection is a fever. A fever might also cause you to have chills or feel shaky. If you start to feel unwell, you must take your temperature. If it is 38.0 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or greater at any point in time, please contact the support line for patients immediately for help. It is very important that you do not take any Tylenol, Advil, aspirin, or any other anti-fever medications before you are seen by the nurse or doctor. These medications will hide your fever and make it harder to diagnose an infection. Do not ignore a fever. If left untreated, a serious and possibly fatal infection can occur. If you have a blood cancer, a fever is more serious and would likely require a visit to the emergency department. Make sure to take your temperature often. In the event that you must go to the emergency department, there is very important information that you need to provide to the emergency department staff. When you arrive, explain that you have a fever and or signs of infection and that you are a cancer patient who has recently received chemotherapy. If possible, give the date and the names of the chemotherapy medications you have been given, as well as the name of your oncologist. If you have a fever after hours or during statutory holidays, please go to the emergency department at the Ottawa Hospital General Campus. If you live out of town, please go to the closest emergency department. The fever card was created to help patients give important information to healthcare providers, such as emergency department staff who are not involved in their cancer treatments. The fever card alerts the hospital staff that you are a cancer patient and that your fever could be a medical emergency. It gives them the dates of your chemotherapy treatment, the medications you received, and the name of your oncologist. If you have a fever card, give it to the registration clerk or the triage nurse when you arrive in the emergency department. Once in the emergency department, you will be assessed by a doctor. Blood tests may be drawn to check your white blood cell count. Other blood and urine tests may be done to check for any infections. When your white blood cell count is low, you may develop an infection from the normal bacteria that live in your body. Under normal conditions, your healthy white blood cells keep them from causing a problem. However, if these cells are weakened by chemotherapy, infections can develop. There are many ways that you can lower your risk of getting an infection. These include washing your hands thoroughly and often with soap and water, especially before preparing or eating food and after using the washroom. Alcohol-based hand gels like Purell can be used when soap and water are not available. Keeping your mouth clean is also very important. Continue flossing if this was part of your routine. Make sure you floss gently to prevent cutting or irritating your gums. Even if you are tired, ensure that you shower or bathe daily. This will help to prevent infection and make you feel good. Avoid crowds and people who might be sick with illnesses such as a cold or the flu. If you have pets, ask another family member or friend to clean bird cages and litter boxes. Animal wastes contain many bacteria that can cause infections if your white blood cell count is low. In addition to lowering your white blood cell count, chemotherapy can also cause a drop in your red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen to all parts of your body. When the number of red blood cells is low, less oxygen is moved throughout your body. A lowered red cell count can cause you to feel weak, tired, and dizzy. It may also cause you to feel short of breath 
and experience headaches. Another important part of the blood are your platelets. They help the body stop bleeding by making clots. Platelets can also be affected by chemotherapy. If your platelet count is low, you may have bleeding from the nose or gums, see blood in your urine or stool, and may notice small red spots on your skin. To lower your risk of bleeding, do not take any medications with aspirin unless advised by your doctor. Aspirin affects the ability of platelets to stick together in a clot. Take care when working with sharp objects and use protective gloves when needed. Use a soft toothbrush and continue to floss if this was your normal routine. Floss gently to prevent bleeding. Patients with cancer are more at risk for blood clots. Look out for any of the following symptoms. Sudden or recent swelling of one leg or arm. Unexplained pain or tenderness of one leg or arm. Skin may be warm to the touch or discolored red, purple, or blue. Recent or sudden shortness of breath or breathlessness. Sharp chest pain or upper back pain, especially when inhaling. Lightheadedness or coughing up blood. Chemotherapy can cause mouth sores because the lining of the mouth is made up of quickly dividing cells that are very sensitive to chemotherapy. It is important to visit your dentist before starting your treatment. If major dental work is planned, check with your oncologist or nurse first. Rinsing your mouth often every two to three hours and after eating can help to prevent and heal mouth sores. Rinsing after each brushing and as needed with mixture of baking soda and salt is recommended. You can make this rinse easily at home by mixing together one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, and four cups of water. Do not refrigerate the mixture as extremes in temperature can cause more irritation. We recommend using a soft toothbrush to clean your teeth and stay away from mouthwashes that contain alcohol as they can dry your mouth. Some patients require pain medication. Some foods and drinks can be irritating to the inside of your mouth. Change your diet to include soft, moist foods and eat regular, small meals. Eat food at room temperature and try to stay away from foods and drinks that are tart, salty, spicy, acidic, or fizzy. Avoid alcohol and tobacco use. If you see white spots on the inside of your cheeks, or a coating is present on your tongue, this could be a sign of a fungal infection that needs a prescription. Nausea and vomiting are unpleasant side effects of chemotherapy. Fortunately, we have very effective medications available. It is important to make sure you take your medications as prescribed by your doctor. Most patients will get an extra prescription for a second anti-nausea medication that can be taken as needed if the first medication is not enough. You should never wait for the nausea to get worse. It is easier to control when it is just beginning instead of waiting until it worsens. Eating small, regular, bland meals during the day may help with nausea. It is also important that you drink a lot of fluids. Try to drink six to eight glasses of water per day. Try to also lower your coffee and alcohol intake as they can cause dehydration. Try relaxation exercises such as deep breathing, walking outside, or listening to music. Constipation is known as having bowel movements less often or having trouble passing stool that is hard and dry. Some chemotherapy, painkillers, and nausea medications can cause constipation. It can get worse if you don't drink enough fluids, if you do not get enough exercise, or by stress. It is important to drink at least six to eight glasses of liquids per day and be active when possible. Some laxatives and stool softeners may be needed. Please do not use suppositories or enemas without a physician's direction. These can potentially damage the rectal lining and cause infection. 
Diarrhea is known as having loose, watery, unformed stool more than three to four times per day. Some chemotherapy, bowel surgery, radiation treatment, and antibiotics can cause diarrhea. This can be managed by eating low fiber foods and staying away from fried, greasy foods, milk products, and foods that can cause gas. Drink six to eight glasses of liquids per day. Bowel stimulants such as laxatives should not be taken. Depending on the cancer medication, it can remain in your system for two to seven days after treatment has finished. Once the cancer medication has circulated through the body, most of it is eliminated in your body fluids. This means bodily waste such as urine, vomit, blood, stool, semen, and vaginal secretions must be handled with care during this time. Flush the toilet with the lid down and consider flushing twice if you have a water-sparing toilet. Keep the lid down to prevent family pets from drinking from the bowl. Sheets or clothing soiled with vomit or urine should be washed alone in the washing machine. Cutlery and dishes can be washed in the usual manner. Wear gloves if possible and wash your hands when gloves are removed after cleaning body fluids. Some chemotherapy medication can cause damage to your nerves. This damage can cause symptoms like hearing loss, numbness, burning, tingling, or pins and needles in your hands and feet. Damage to your nerves can also cause muscle weakness that might make everyday tasks like opening jars and buttoning clothes more difficult. It can also cause you to become constipated or have difficulty urinating. These symptoms are usually temporary but may require stopping or lowering the dose of chemotherapy. Please make sure to tell your healthcare team if you have any of these symptoms. Anxiety is known as repeated feelings of worry, fear, or nervousness. Anxiety is normal for patients and families who are dealing with cancer. It usually goes away on its own within days, but if it lasts longer, you may need help to manage it. Depression is defined as the strong feelings of sadness and loss of interest that do not go away for weeks or months. Please know that it is normal to feel sad when you have cancer. If your sadness does not go away, it may be a sign that you need support. There are many self-care strategies including improving your sleep, being active, yoga, massage therapy, to name a few. Find support from friends, family, or community support groups. The Ottawa Hospital also has a team on site who can provide you with individual or group support. You can be referred by your healthcare team or refer yourself. You can call 613-737-7700, extension 70516 for the general or extension 25200 for the Irving Greenberg Family Cancer Center to refer yourself. It is important to maintain intimacy, especially when experiencing stressful times. Wear a condom during sexual activity. Barrier protection is important for men and women on treatment. Depending on the medication, chemotherapy can be present in the semen and vaginal secretions for two to seven days. This can cause tissue irritation for your partner, so a condom should be worn even if birth control is not a concern. Prevent pregnancies during and shortly after cancer treatment because the medications have a negative effect on the sperm and eggs. Talk to your physician before you try to have a baby. You may have concerns about your appearance during this time. Intimacy with your partner may change. Know that you are not alone. Share your feelings with your loved ones. There are many resources online to help you. Your healthcare team can also help you access these resources. It is important to know that not all cancer medications cause hair loss. It depends on the type of medication and the amount given. 
If hair loss is to happen, it is usually starting two to three weeks after your first treatment. Hair loss is usually temporary and will likely regrow approximately six weeks after the last treatment. Using gentle shampoos and hair products is recommended. Some suggestions for coping with hair loss include wearing a head covering, such as a hat, to protect yourself from the sun and cold. If you want to wear a hat, scarf, or head covering, there are often free donated hats available in the chemo unit. Feel free to ask your nurse if there are any available. If you want to wear a wig or hairpiece, shopping early for a wig will help you match the color and style of your own hair. Please check the Canadian Cancer Society website for the most up-to-date information about wigs, hair pieces, and other hair and scalp care strategies. Attending a Look Good, Feel Better program is an excellent way to lift the spirits and learn some useful beauty tips about skincare and makeup, such as how to recreate lost eyebrows using makeup. Ask your nurse for more information or visit the Look Good, Feel Better website at www.lgfb.ca. Some cancer medications can cause you to become more sensitive to the sun. It is important to use sunscreen with a sun protection factor, or SPF, of at least 30 and to cover up when outdoors. Wear a sun hat, stay in the shade, and drink plenty of liquids. For more information about managing your symptoms, please do not hesitate to ask your healthcare team. Cancer Care Ontario has a great website with symptom-specific brochures and information as well. You can visit their website at www.cancercareontario.ca. You can also access helpful resources at our Patient Support Centre, located on the first floor of the Ottawa Hospital General Campus Cancer Centre, or at the Irving Greenberg Family Cancer Center. All cancer treatments are more effective without tobacco use. Cancer medications are more effective as there are less chemicals in your blood that interact with them. Quitting smoking will give you more energy and allow you to breathe easier. It lowers the risk of your cancer returning or being diagnosed with another cancer. It also lowers your risk of a heart attack stroke, and death by 50% within a year. Quitting smoking or even lowering the number of cigarettes you smoke in a day will make your treatment more effective. Speak to your healthcare team for more information or call Telehealth Ontario to access smoking cessation support. Here are some tips to make your stay in the chemotherapy treatment unit more comfortable. We encourage you to bring a small snack as some treatments can be long. Please make sure that all of your drinks have lids and you keep all food items away from chemotherapy bags and the red disposal bins. Wash your hands with soap and water or using hand sanitizer before eating. Please avoid bringing strong smelling foods. Due to space restrictions, please bring only one family member or friend. Children under the age of 16 are not allowed in the treatment areas. Depending on how long your treatment will be, you may want to bring a book or tablet. The Ottawa Hospital offers free Wi-Fi. You will need to have blood work done before each cancer medication treatment. Without these results, your treatment may be cancelled or delayed. Your cancer medications will not be made by the pharmacy until your nurse checks your blood test results. If your blood counts are too low, your oncologist may decide to cancel or delay your treatment. Your blood test can be done 48 hours or two days before your treatment. You may need urgent help at some point during or after your treatment. The support lines for patients are open 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. If you have any of the following medical problems, please call right away. These include a temperature of 38.0 degrees Celsius or 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, vomiting that lasts more than a day, inability to drink fluids for more than a day, 
blood in your urine or stool, more than seven loose bowel movements in a day, a bloated stomach or no stool in three days, new swelling, pain, or change in temperature in your legs, ankles, arms, neck, or face, worsening pain, painful mouth sores, worsening lower back pain and difficulty walking, worsening shortness of breath, worsening confusion or drowsiness, redness, swelling, or pain at the injection site, or any other concern you have related to your cancer or treatment. After hours and on statutory holidays, please proceed to the General Campus Emergency Department. Patients living outside of Ottawa should go to their closest emergency department. These are the support lines for you to call if you have any questions related to test results or symptom management. The clerical and nursing teams are available during regular office hours to answer your call. If you have a blood cancer such as lymphoma, contact your hematologist's office and ask to speak with a nurse. If you require urgent care after hours, please go to the nearest emergency department or call 911. Please note that other medical emergencies may occur that may or may not be related to cancer treatments. Please call 911 if you have any of the following symptoms. New or worsening shortness of breath. Sudden or new chest pain. A lowered level of consciousness. Inability to wake up. Extreme drowsiness or confusion. Sudden or new bleeding. New back pain with difficulty walking. New seizures. And new numbness or weakness in your arms or legs. We thank you for watching and wish you well as you start your cancer treatments.